The starting scene contains a flat plane for the pavement, a daylight system for the lighting and a few cameras hidden from view. Before you start modeling, there are a few settings you need to check. In the Preferences dialog, General section, make sure Use Real World Texture Coordinates is disabled. This tool is unnecessary for the techniques shown here. Another important setting to consider is found in the Viewports tab. Make sure you are using the Direct 3D driver and in the Configure Driver dialog, enable the two options that read Match Bitmap Size as closely as possible. This ensures good quality display for bitmaps in the viewports. View the image file you will be using as a reference. Note its pixel size and calculate the aspect ratio. In this case, 1200 over 1533 equals 0 0.78. The width of this building is roughly 7 meters. No tape measure was available when the picture was taken, so paces were used instead. Based on the aspect ratio derived from the reference picture, that makes the building height about 9 meters. 7 meters divided by 0.78 aspect ratio equals 8.97 meters, almost 9 meters. Once you have the building dimensions ready, build a flat plane in the front view. Set the length width values to 9 by 7 meters and the detail segments to 1. Move the pivot point of this newly created object to its bottom center. and then center the object to the origin 000. This is always a good spot for modeling an object. Convert the plane to an editable poly and rename it Facade 1. Next, you apply a material to the Facade 1 object with the reference image as a texture. In the Slate Material Editor, use the Arc and Design material. Double-click the node title to display the material's parameters and set it to a matte finish. Drag out the diffuse color map input and add the reference image as a standard bitmap. Link the bitmap also to the bump map channel as it will improve the render. Ultimately, you can increase the bump amount for extra roughness. Apply the newly created material to the facade 1 object. Make sure Show Standard Map in Viewport is enabled so that you can see the bitmap in the viewport. At this time, you can close the Material Editor. You also want to ensure that at least the front and perspective views are set to Shaded Mode with Edged Faces Mode active, F3 and F4 hotkeys on the keyboard. You are almost ready to start modeling, but not quite yet. If you tried moving edges or vertices around, you'd deform the applied texture. Try placing a UVW map modifier on top of the stack. Move down to the editable poly level, enable show end results and start editing vertices or edges. The trick appears to work. However, used at a poly level, such as to create an inset for example, you notice you still have a problem. This is happening because the modifier on top, UVW mapping, is only affecting the selected polygon, the inset selected part of the model. To overcome this issue, add a poly select modifier before the UVW mapping. This modifier gives back the control to the entire object and not to subselections. It ensures the top modifiers affect the object as a whole and not any selected polygons. Try again the inset at the editable poly level. Remember to enable the show end result mode. This time, the procedure works. You lose the shaded polygons, but the mapping is preserved nicely. Selection colors have also changed. In the subdivision surface group, change the cage colors to white and red for a more familiar look. Move on to part 3 of this project to start adding detail.